What's going on, Blade Series? We're going to be working to do a live stream. I'm closest to the modem as possible to try and see if this works any better. Uh, it's kind of an impromptu live stream, so I don't expect to have too many people on. Uh, but if you do want to watch it later, and then I'll probably take it down at some point. Uh, but uh, right now, I'm just going to get a little set up here, and then uh, we'll see if anybody signs on. If not, then I'll just get going. And then I'm setting up my tablet as well. Uh, you can hear me repeat myself there. And then, uh, then if there is any comments, then I'll be able to see that um, in there too. So live stream, and that's going. Uh, so and we'll see what's available for that. Uh, so uh, some of the live streams, awesome. I think that's neat. Uh, so uh, we have one person on. Very cool. Uh, so I'm close to the modem as possible to try and get uh, the information. Um, out there because a lot of times I was in another room and then my Wi-Fi was cutting out on me uh, so that was kind of an issue uh, so uh, first thing is first I'm going to be sending out um, some knives uh, for uh, the um, the steel testing uh, so Kurt uh, has been able to provide that uh, so the knives that I'm going to be sending out uh, for uh, that testing is going to be uh, these knives up here uh, so these are going to be the ones that will be going out uh, so they're the um, the new one from uh, Yobo Tool. Uh, so this is one that they uh, sent in for review. Uh, so this one uh, lists for VG10. Uh, so I'm going to send that one out. And then I'm going to have the one here. Now this is also uh, one from uh, F & Grow. Um, I, I found the, the actual brand on, uh, I think, DHgate or something. So uh, this one lists for D2, but it's also like a $20 knife. And then we do have the Fury Gear uh, that will go out as well. Uh, so this is going to be the Fura, uh, so uh, very much uh, the Arclight uh, slim foot. Uh, so that's where um, really this this is a copy of that. Uh, so other than doing a full review on it, I'm going to do uh, a testing on this to see uh, if this is real at all as far as D2 uh, to uh, the titanium uh, for it. So that's going to be going out uh, for those steel tests. Uh, so I do have one person on, so welcome aboard. Uh, but uh, these ones are going to go out for steel testing. Uh, so we have these three I'm going out to Kurt. Uh, so uh, VG10, uh, D2, and D2. Uh, so we'll see how that works out uh, for uh, that, uh, as far as steel tests, if it's actually real or not uh, for those. Uh, one thing I got in uh, for, uh, which is kind of interesting, there's not really a lot of information out on it. Uh, they say that they're the first ones that actually brought out uh, the edge guides, uh, but the, they're um, from Razor Edge Systems. Uh, so I did order a, a guide uh, from them uh, to see uh, what it is, and also ordered in uh, something that they call the uh, mini mouse trap. So it's basically a more of something to maintain uh, the edge that you have on. Uh, so it's kind of like the little Asking on TV one in look. So I'm thinking that the Asking on TV one uh, went and took an existing design and then mass marketed it. Uh, so hopefully this one's a little bit better as far as the information goes. So two people on, welcome on board. It's not showing me who it is, but if you want to chime in on the comments, then I'll know who I am talking to as well. Uh, so we're going to open this one up. Uh, so this is one from the uh, Razor Edge Systems. Uh, so this is going to be that uh, mini mouse trap and also the guide. And then we'll also go through later on as far as uh, some of the knives that are in my knife rolls. So I have three knife rolls uh, that I have um, basically my collection in. And then I have the other knives that go around in the pass around as well. Uh, so those are kind of the ones that change over time. So what we have here, uh, so this is one, um, I was interested about this. Um, uh, Jeff Jewell uh, said that really um, you could do this test uh, with um, a Sharpie marker uh, to actually feel the edge as far as if there's any burrs or anything on it. Uh, there's not a lot of information on this. This is like uh, almost $10. Uh, so it's probably going to be a waste of money, uh, but uh, for Razor Edge systems, uh, this is the edge tester. Uh, so you can actually see or actually feel uh, what that is. Hey, how's it going? Welcome aboard. Uh, but uh, so this is going to be one that I can see for um, Mount Baldwin. Uh, so welcome, welcome. Uh, so this one you can actually run over the edge, feel the burrs, feel the uh, any nicks or anything on it. So I'm going to test that out, uh, see if that uh, works um, as it should. Um, I don't really have the instructions for that, so we're going to go over that later. Uh, we have this one, which is one of the guides. Uh, so this is uh, a guide that came on uh, JCB67. Howdy. 
so this is one of the guides. Uh, so uh, the thing I don't really know about this one is uh, most guides have some type of um, thing on it as far as it, what runs on the stone. Uh, this is basically going to be metal uh, to the stone. Uh, so I'm not too sure if that's going to change the angle on it. What's up, Steve? That nobody knows what Steve, I mean, he helped me get uh, some uh, scales from uh, the, um, for my mini Griptilian, which is the silver, which is somewhere around here, actually. So that knife uh, he helped get from uh, Death of All Things. So this is the one that he helped me pick up as far as the scales uh, for this, which is just gorgeous uh, for this. Blade's uh, pretty beat up. Uh, so this is a used knife that I had uh, and then I added these scales to it. And then I'm gonna probably switch that back to a satin clip as well. Uh, but yep, silver 12, amazing uh, for that. Uh, but for going back to the sharpening, as far as a guide, uh, this one you can actually clamp in there. So it actually clamps your blade. Uh, there's two different sizes. Uh, this goes for about 1895. Uh, and then there's one that's for um, basically four, uh, 3.5 inches. And then there's one that goes for uh, 3.5 and above. Uh, so you clamp that in and then uh, you actually use this uh, to run on the stone. From what I saw on the video, uh, the knife itself uh, clamps in and then you actually hold the handle of the knife and actually can sharpen it this way instead of most times where you would actually um, do a little bit closer to the edge. Uh, so I'm gonna see how this one is uh, for it. Uh, they say it is very good. They say that they're the origination of an edge sharpening guide. Uh, whether that be the case, I don't know, uh, but it does also have the adjustment uh, Allen wrenches for it too. And hopefully they'll have some instructions because the only video I've ever seen on this uh, looks like it came from the 80s as far as video quality and sound quality. So I'm gonna see if that helps out because uh, I do have to sharpen uh, one of the knives that came in uh, from uh, the knife beater. Uh, he sent in uh, just, just nicely kindly sent in a knife uh, for this one. This is that SOG uh, Vulcan, uh, but this edge is beat up. There's nicks in it. Uh, there's a VG10 blade, uh, but this is the one I'm gonna be testing uh, to see if it fixes uh, with this guide system from a razor edge uh, systems. So we'll see how that works out now for that one. And then the other one I pick out, picked up was a steel. So, looks pretty fancy. Looks a heck of a lot more quality than uh, what you're gonna find in a store. Uh, so um, this is kind of the thing, I think it's called the Bavarian Edge. Uh, that's like an as seen on TV item, uh, which looks like chintzy as all get out. Uh, but this uh, is uh, one of the steels that are set up. Hey, how's it going? Welcome, thank you very much for joining. Uh, but there's one that, um, instead of the Bavarian Edge, uh, this one might be good, uh, but uh, they had a deal on this because they had some imperfection models. I guess this is supposed to be a gloss black, and then so their manufacturing, it came out flat, which I would actually prefer the flat. So now uh, for edge, uh, razor edge systems, I mean, flat is probably the way to go, other than glossy. Glossy normally, to me, uh, looks pretty um, cheapy. Uh, so for most of that, it uh, doesn't look very good. So I think this just drops right in there. So this goes on the countertop. And then you just run the blade through. Um, and then they said that it's not supposed to be, go all the way to the bottom. So you basically hit in the middle and then draw your blade. So it'll take out some of the burrs on it. So there's the steels. Instead of getting the chef steel rod, which a lot of people mess up anyway, uh, this is something that's more of a fixed system. <laughs> Medieval torture device. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, could be. I mean, it looks pretty fancy. So that's steel. That's steel. This is a composite, uh, but very quality build for it. Uh, this came out again. Uh, this was uh, forty-two ninety-five uh, for this, and hopefully uh, it works well because uh, uh, again, Razor Edge Systems doesn't have a lot out there uh, for their information. Uh, so I will check that out and get back to you guys. But this is kind of the this is a mini, so I would hate to see the full size because this is already pretty big. I mean, what do we have for a knife? So I mean, this is let's get a knife roll. 
So this is my Perpetua. I mean, this is a this is a substantial unit. I mean, it's supposed to be something that, yeah, sit on your countertop and then run your knives through it whenever you need them. But I mean, that's pretty big. But that's going to be that. And then I want to see what else are you. So uh, those are the ones that are getting in from Razor, Razor Edge Systems. Uh, we'll see uh, for the, the edge tester if we can actually feel that difference, uh, the actual guide uh, to see if that how that works and how that works with stones the pull through and then I already talked about as far as the ones going out for steel testing uh, as well so it seems like the live stream is going pretty well uh, so I think I need to be in this room if I'm going to do live streams uh, because the other side I would, get, I would get cutouts and things would break up so uh, it seems like that's going all right so that's that one uh, really exciting uh, news for it now so um, the idea started uh, from uh, Epic Snuggle Bunny. Uh, so if you haven't seen his channel, uh, some of his live streams, uh, he has the Barney lunchbox, uh, so which is something that, that Blade HQ loads a knife for him. He doesn't know what it is. Uh, so I saw that and I was like, ah, that's kind of an interesting idea. Uh, so uh, I kind of molded over when I talked to some other channels to kind of figure out a format, uh, how we're going to do a blind knife review and make it actually something that people will actually really like, people will uh, be able to see. Uh, so uh, exciting, exciting. So uh, so basically, this came in from uh, uh, Steve. Uh, he actually, uh, I asked him and he actually said yes. Uh, he, he went and picked a knife. I don't know what's in this box. Uh, this is sealed up like crazy. Uh, so I don't know how that's going to work uh, to actually unbox this because I don't really want to blindly cut a box because uh, that's going to be probably good entertainment for everybody else if I cut myself, but I don't really want to cut myself. Uh, so I'm going to try and open that up. Uh, so how this is going to work is uh, for all the viewers, uh, you guys will actually be um, on the opposite side. We're actually going to use uh, kind of the kids uh, science fair poster board, the little three po uh, portion one. We're going to cut arm holes through it and then stick our arms through the back. So our arm's going to be sticking out the front side. Our uh, box is going to be on the front side. We'll behind it and be behind it, and the, shoot, the camera will shoot from the front. Uh, so you guys will be able to see uh, the knife that we're looking at. We won't be able to see the knife that we're looking at, and we'll handle it, uh, see by, by feel, uh, by action, by uh, you see sound, as far as what that knife is, uh, what we think about it, uh, rough value on the knife, and then, uh, so hopefully that's going to be really entertaining. Uh, we have uh, seven channels that are going to be involved in the process. Uh, so that's going to be a pretty interesting thing. So hopefully that is. Now let me know as far as if that's something that sounds interesting to you or just completely ridiculous. Because if it works well, then we'll have uh, basically another one, uh, which will be uh, kind of the, uh, we'll be able to expand it to more channels. Uh, and then also maybe even send two knives out to kind of increase the speed of it because right, right now we're, what we're going to do is we're going to send it out everybody will do their video send it to the next person and all the way through and then we're going to drop it one time now so uh, we're going to have kind of um, a movie premiere type of thing going on where we're going to actually have that knife uh, uh, go to everybody everyone will do the video and then uh, we'll let all of you folks know when the video will be available and then we're going to drop the video one day in time uh, so you guys can go through a playlist and actually watch everybody's actions, reactions, thoughts on the knife, and actually really what's in the box. And so that's going to be how the blind knife review is going to work. Uh, so um, just let me know. I mean, if that works, if we get views on it, if we get good comments on it, uh, then we will continue uh, with that process and we'll actually see how that goes uh, for that. So not open, don't know what's in it. I can shake it like a Christmas present, so it is a little bit of movement in there, um, but don't know. Uh, so that's going to be happening with that. Uh, oh, I also have a review for this. This is the gimbal that I was using uh, for Blade Show. So if you haven't seen the Blade Show coverage, uh, check that out. Uh, there was uh, quite a few vendors that I was able to talk to, uh, very uh, gracious folks. Now, uh, create, I mean, event. So that was my first Blade Show. Uh, so uh, as I was told, it's a lot smaller than Atlanta, uh, but. It was good. You get to you know, just people are very um, open and welcome to talk to you. Uh, so I was going up to people, um, even we see the owners of the companies. Uh, they're doing interviews. Uh, so it was just a very amazing that that's available uh, for that. 
Uh, but uh, this one goes for about 135, I think. Uh, but I was able to even use it. Now we went to the pumpkin patch. Uh, so with my family, so it wasn't a total waste. I actually went and used this also uh, for trips around and it does uh, uh, really even things out uh, for that. Enjoy the short takes. Me? Yeah. Don't know what that means exactly. Are you talking about like the, um, the stop motions that, that normally put together? So that's kind of a new thing. If that's what you're referring to anyway, I'm not too sure. Uh, but uh, for the short takes, is that it? Let me know. Blade show. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, but Blade show, no, you know, it was pretty good for that, uh, for those interviews. Uh, so uh, these are some of the ones that I, I just have, I store some of my knives um, available. So I have the knife rolls. I actually picked up three of them. Uh, so uh, from Blade Show, I mean Blade HQ. Uh, so they go for, I think, like $15 now uh, for these. They hold about 12 knives uh, for them. Uh, but uh, yeah, Blade Show videos, yeah. Yeah, they're good. Nice. So I appreciate now watching them and everything else because because as much as that was, I mean, I missed out on picking up some knives because I went through and I you know, was doing interviews. I missed out on that Civivi knife in D2 I could have picked up. Um, and then they're not going to be bringing that out until sometime December, January time period. Uh, so hopefully yeah, it was something that you guys enjoyed for that and you're able to watch it. Uh, some really, uh, some were actually some of my favorites as far as those interviews. Uh, but so these are some of the knives that I have in here. Uh, so if you guys want to see any of them, let me know. But uh, so, Griptilian, uh, we have the you know, the Cold Steel. You know, this is actually really the Code Four. I mean, the Code Four is a huge knife as far as a profile, uh, but, but it's so thin. I mean, this is just that's just ridiculous. I mean, I put a bit a big pen in front of that and actually covered the thing. Uh, so uh, for this knife. Uh, it's actually really very cool uh, for that one. Uh, so did pick up uh, one of these uh, for the Stat Gear Asus. Uh, so they actually are. They do have another one coming out uh, as far as another little EDC knife. Uh, this one, the industry came in uh, with some lockup issues. I was able to work that out though. Uh, but going through some of the other ones, so we do have. This is probably, this is kind of, I guess, a safe queen type of knife. Uh, but uh, this is probably one of the most beautiful ones that I have as far as the look of it. Uh, this is going to be the Fox uh, Bastinelli uh, collaboration, the Dragotac uh, in wood. I just, I mean, just, I, I just love, I mean, everything about that as far as the blade shape, uh, the wood scales. Uh, it's just really cool. And that's going to be just a friction folder. And it does come with the sheath. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm just going to be going through uh, some of these um, as far as uh, kind of what I have here. Uh, so I'm also involved with the pass around group. Uh, so we do have some knives that are going to be coming around uh, from uh, V knives. Uh, we do have some from uh, Wii and Civivi uh, that are going to be coming around. And then uh, there's some other ones that are going to be in the works as well. So uh, as those come around, uh, we'll be able to see uh, some more reviews coming up too. Uh, so that's that one. Uh, we do have uh, also, um, this is one of the Civivis, the Backlash. And then so, uh, I might actually give this one to uh, Steve for helping out too. Because uh, he was actually wanting to pick this one up. I don't know if he did. I don't remember from his comments if he did or not. But uh, Backlash. Uh, one that's kind of a rare one. Uh, uh, that is the one of the H&Ks. Uh, this is the one that's uh, uh, by Benchmade. And surprisingly, they actually do uh, cover the warranty on this. Uh, so the life, the life sharp, uh, still applies uh, to this knife. Uh, so this is the HK. I prefer a regular blade instead of the Tanto, but uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's made in the USA. Uh, this is the one that's bench made, and yeah, life sharp. So if I use it, abuse it, ship it, send it back, they'll go and actually sharpen that if I don't want to take the time to sharpen those as well. That's that roll. Uh, they actually did also improve the knife roll uh, for uh, the new one. Uh, so um, the, this is the new one, the green one. Uh, this is the older one for the black. 
So if you can see on this one, it has the plastic all the way down, uh, fold the, the full sleeve. Uh, Griffin, what clip is on? That's actually the same clip that's on the Griffin. Uh, that is, is the factory clip uh, on that Griffin. So this is actually a used one too. So it's, it's fairly beat up, but the action is uh, is really nice on it. Um, for that Griffin. So yeah, no aftermarket clip on the Griffin. It, that is the factory clip. Uh, I don't know if they changed it over time, but uh, that's the one that I got it. And I think Jack Farm Boys also had that clip on it uh, for uh, that knife too. Yes, but Griffin, very nice. Uh, I do love but button locks. So um, if anybody's following as far as CRKT, um, they are coming out uh, with a button lock for 2019. They didn't have anything to show, um, but uh, the representative I was talking to was excited about it. I'm excited about it. I'll actually go in, uh, if, like sight unseen, uh, if Blade H, I mean, with, um, if CRKT offered a pre-sale on a button lock, um, I would put money down on it because I like um, CRKT's button lock. Uh, so I have, this is kind of my one that's uh, kind of the baseline uh, for button locks and fidget factor knives. Uh, so CRKT TITAC 2, uh, this one is uh, the Brian Tai uh, collaboration design. So this one has probably the most uh, opening um, methods that you could find. I mean, it has the flipper tab, uh, and then, I mean, both methods as far as push button or light switch, uh, you can actually just use the um, button lock as thumb studs on it. So you can do the thumb and as well as the middle finger flick. And then you can also do, um, well, you can do an inertia drop on it as well. Um, so that's how you can open that one. So it's pretty amazing for that. Uh, so yeah, I'm not too sure why yours is the chrome clip um, for yours. Uh, but yeah, that's the one that was on there. So unless the previous person painted mine, um, it very well could have been painted, uh, but that is the clip that's on that Griffin uh, right there. But no, that's gonna be coming out uh, for the um, CRKT. Uh, they're gonna have that one uh, for another button lock, which is going to be fantastic. I'm gonna be very excited about that. Uh, for that company and with the things that are happening with uh, CRKT with the collaborations uh, with and my phone's ringing for some reason so one moment I'm going to go and turn it off because most likely And we'll see what happens with that. I can't turn off the message. But I actually still have a landline, uh, which is kind of an odd thing that most people probably don't have landlines, but we'll see where that is as well. Um, no, where was I? I don't know. Uh, but uh, yep, yeah, open a new pouch. Uh, so old pouch, new pouch. So this is a new pouch no, from Blight HQ. Uh, so they did change it uh, from the uh, previous. Uh, so they did add uh, so this kind of this canvas material, and uh, they added it to where the clip is, uh, which is actually a good good idea and a good thing to do uh, for that uh, because uh, I mean that's where the clip is. It's going to be scratching that plastic up. Uh, you can still see the knife. You can see still see uh, what's available to you. Uh, the price went up uh, probably about two dollars. Uh, so it went from I think this was like uh, twelve or thirteen dollars. This one's fifteen dollars. And then so if you just order the knife rolls by itself, it's like three dollars shipping. Uh, so that's going to put you under 20 bucks um, uh, for the knife roll. Uh, so it's a very nice one as far as how that goes. Um, and then if anybody experienced you know, for Kershaw, as far as their warranty process, uh, it's very slow. It's very slow. Uh, so um, I got this one in, uh, and then I found that, I mean, it had a broken tip. Uh, it had the uh, safety was removed uh, from it. So uh, on the positive note, uh, they took care of me without charging me. So they actually did change the blight out uh, for this knife. Uh, but uh, I mean, the, the sharpening job on it's 
horrendous. I mean, it's a, it's not straight. I mean, it kind of goes up and then kind of has this little recurve at the tip. Uh, it's fairly bad. Um, so I'm gonna have to resharpen this one, uh, but uh, that that black and blue uh, for the the leak. Uh, for that. And then so we have a little bit different ones for that. Uh, so uh, that's the difference with the knife rolls uh, as far as uh, from the old one to the new one. I think it's a good idea as far as the way that they change that uh, so it actually is a better design. Uh, so going to uh, some of these knives here, uh, we have this one will probably be uh, coming up as far as review uh, most recently. Uh, this is going to be uh, the one that is the uh, is it, it's a rake. Uh, knife. This is the one of the um, slip joints, um, but uh, one thing that's kind of bad about it, I, I ordered it in to try and see if I could uh, disengage this little liner lock. I guess the liner lock on this isn't really, it's more of a safety than a, a true liner lock, that it doesn't actually make contact with the blade uh, until you actually try and close it. Uh, so it adds some type of benefit or some type of um, like security um, if you actually are uh, working with the blade. Uh, but for countries or other areas where you can't have any locking mechanism, uh, I was expecting that I could just disengage this and maybe flip it to the other side. But um, the actual pivot uh, is free spinning, uh, so I can't actually take it apart uh, to actually do anything with it. Uh, so, so there's going to be one that's going to be kind of just stuck with how it is. Um, but that's that one. Uh, this one just was uh, one of the recent ones for Amazon. Uh, so they had the sale for this. Oh man, that's stuck in there. So this is one of the sales. Uh, so Tangram had a, a little quick run on this. Uh, this was, I think it came out to be like $12 or something, normally 30 bucks uh, for this knife. Uh, so that was kind of an interesting thing there. Uh, Anything else that anybody wants to see? So if you see, want, want to see anything of uh, these knife rolls, I don't have an extensive collection of knives. Um, I'm pretty, pretty budget still. I was able to get into the, you know, the pass around. Other people were able to assist with getting some other knives, um, but uh, they're not. Um, my actual collection that I have and own uh, isn't a high-end one. Uh, so that's where I, I think I'm gonna still stick to that route as far as that goes. Uh, still one of the favorite flippers, uh, the Kaiser Dukes. It just there's just something about the action. It just it just flies out there, and it's very much a whipping action for that. So that one's a super awesome. Uh, one of the uh, the best uh, uh, grinds uh, that I, I saw. Uh, so the hollow grind. Uh, so for the uh, Voss, uh, this one I think has one of the most beautiful hollow grinds that I've come across uh, for the knife. Uh, will I use a field strip technology? Not really. I mean, it's kind of interesting to have as far as an engineering type of thing, uh, but uh, it's probably not one that's like uh, a make or break type of thing. If if they brought this out without um, the field strip, it probably would still be a good knife too. Uh, but I love that hollow grind on that. Standard one for um, P801. Uh, and then do you have the copper? So uh, one thing that um, that Kershaw uh, was having issues with, uh, why their uh, copper matrix are taking so long, is that uh, the factory, you know, when they said, okay, well, we're gonna make a copper knife, well, the, the manufacturer side said, okay, well, we gotta put a coating on it, we have to do this and that, so it won't, won't patina. Well, I mean, that's the point of having one of these, is you want it to patina over time, you want it to have that life to it, you want it to look uh, worn and weathered. You want it to have the different colorations to it. Copper squid? Yep. Yep, so you want to have that coloration to it. So I don't know, Jack, did yours change at all? Like, it seems like CRKT may have had the issue where they added something to the metal or to a coating uh, that doesn't allow it to patina. I didn't for try and force any patina on this, but uh, mine looks the same as it did when I got it. Uh, so that's the, something I don't want with the uh, Kershaw uh, copper matrix. I want that to actually change over time. I want it to have that. I mean, that's the point of some of the copper ones, like the copper flashlights and everything, to have uh, that change and have that patina to it. 
so uh, let me know, Jack, if yours uh, still looks like it did out of the box or if yours actually did start to patina for yours. No, oh, see, so, so they probably did put a coating on it. So as Jack said that he scuffed his up a little bit and then now it's starting to patina. Uh, but yeah, I think they put a coating on it uh, so it won't, uh, which defeats the purpose. I mean, it's supposed to do that. Uh, so some of the ones that, probably a rare one that people don't have or have seen, this is their first flipper knife uh, for uh, this one here, this is the K-Bar. Uh, this is their, their first go at flippers. Uh, for first go, um, it is um, not something you want to really you know, go out of the gate um, for this type of knife. I mean, I would have thought they would have gone a little bit better for it, uh, maybe uh, maybe a little bit better with the steel. The steel would probably be uh, where they could have uh, made this still a, a solid knife for people to pick up, um, but I, it's a fairly low steel, I think it's one of the CRs type of thing. Yeah, so cool design, but yeah, the, the steel itself, uh, I mean, I would have paid a few extra dollars if you just upgraded the steel. I just wanted to buy it because this was their first ever, like since the existence of K-Bar, uh, they said this is their first flipper knife. It might be their last flipper knife if it's actually not very popular because I'm probably one of the only people that actually have one of these things. And that was kind of the reason why I picked it up is because it was kind of their first one, kind of be part of that fish tree to help them out. Uh, one of the uh, nice ones here too. Um, I haven't done a review on this. I've had it for a while, but uh, for the uh, Arctic Ocean Sailor uh, by Boker or by Magnum by Boker. Uh, so this is actually a pretty cool knife here. I actually like it. Uh, even the checkering pattern on it. Uh, yeah, for the clip on it, uh, I don't know. I mean, you can check on yours, but um, I guess his clip was uh, chrome. Uh, so that's why he was asking like, what type of clip was on mine because mine is black. So I don't know if the pre person previous to me uh, painted it or anything else, uh, but yeah, mine's a black clip on that one. No special clip that I did uh, for it. But that's it. That's that knife roll. Uh, and then we have this knife roll here. So this one is, yeah, yeah so his is chrome too. So I don't know if mine got painted. It could have got painted. Uh, so, uh, but I think it is the, still the same factory clip on that Griffin. Uh, so uh, this one, as far as a Gerber, uh, the 39 series uh, is my favorite as far as the lockback uh, due to the action on this one. Um, so I did pick up a different one, which was a nickel plated one. Um, and then sadly, uh, that was, that was going to be my safe queen knife, you know, just because I thought it was cool. Uh, so that nickel plating on it, um, I ordered it, uh, I was really excited about it. And then when I got it in, the action was poor. Um, there was a bubble, um, underneath the nickel plating, uh, in one of the locations. Um, so yeah, I ended up sending it back. Uh, but this one, uh, I just... I just, just love that thing. And also the knife that caused me to get rid of my uh, Pilar uh, is the Cold Steel Tough Light. So I didn't have one before, um, but I picked, it, picked up one of these. And ergonomically, uh, this works a whole lot better, in my opinion, uh, than the Pilar. Uh, Pilar has got all the S35 now, uh, which is a great thing, uh, but... Uh, just ergonomically, this just feels like an extension of my hand uh, when using it. Uh, and then still can use for one hand operation for it, uh, for being a back lock, or actually a triad lock, uh, which is kind of like a back lock. Um, but got that, Beluga, pretty cool one. And then this one actually was from Jack Farnborough too. Uh, and then I was surprised by now this because uh, Mike Vellenkamp uh, of V Knives, uh, he actually designed this one, so um, I did. I wasn't aware of that, but when I was going through, and it actually has his logo and everything on it, uh, so it's kind of interesting uh, as far as how that goes, where you could actually have a designer's knife and not even know about it. Oops. And uh, so um, this is also one that also not many people probably own. Um, but there's a, 
I think it's Tunnelus, Camelus, one way over that. Now, I know there's a specific way that you pronounce that, uh, but uh, the Impulse 2, uh, for some reason also, this one is like, I just like it. I mean, this is a knife that um, is uh, OS8. So OS8 steel, um, pick it up from your local Walmart. Um, at the time I got this, now, it sells now for like $30. Uh, but I got this for 15 I believe. Uh, so for 15 bucks, I, I just really like it. I mean, it's, it's still tip down, which everybody's going to run away from, but tip down carries, they, I still like this knife. Uh, before it was Blade Show Knife of the Year, uh, I did have this one here. So for uh, the Caligo. Or Caligo, again, another one that has different ways to pronounce it. Uh, but uh, this is one that I really liked. I got this the same time as a dividend, uh, and I like this better than a dividend. Uh, it's it's on IKBS. It's not just a flipper knife. Uh, yeah, manual, so no none of the speed safe uh, type of thing. Um, and that's one other thing too. I think that uh, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but uh, I feel a production speed safe, the best one right now um, is the blur. Uh, so I was able to experience that one. Uh, and then it's, I feel that's the, that's the best one. I mean, I've tried the, the I think the knockout, uh, which is speed safe. Um, I, just, I just think the blur is better. It just has that certain action to it. And um, where it drops the blade down to enclosure, it just works really well. Um, I like it better than the leak uh, for that knife. Uh, so that is the oddity for that. And then I do have uh, these other ones from, um, I have these little pouches from Tuya. Uh, so these are ones that I keep that are kind of, it's a little special to me. Uh, so this one um, that I went and did with, with my kids, uh, we did a forced patina on this uh, open L. So there's a whole mustard type of thing uh, for this where we put the little dollops on it. Uh, it was kind of nerving uh, for a little bit because I'm trying to keep their little hands away from um, getting cut while well, getting a toothpick and dabbing little mustard pieces on here. But I think it came out really nice. Uh, this is one that uh, was inspired by uh, Cornelius Creations. Uh, so if you haven't seen his channel, uh, check that out. Um, and I also did want to pick up um, I want to modify one of these. Uh, if anybody's seen the YouTube video uh, where they put the o aluminum um, uh, 90 degree on the back of this and then uh, polish it out, I think that looks uh, just gorgeous uh, with that little aluminum um, back plate on it. And I would actually like to do like a checkering pattern on this, but I don't have a checkering tool for like a gun system or anything else. So uh, yeah, I think it turned out really nice. And it's something that's like, it's kind of a memory thing. So even if this has really no particular value as far as it goes for like a $12 knife, it has value to me. I mean, there's one that, that I'm not going to give up. And that's something that's kind of interesting about uh, any type of thing that you collect or anything that you have. Uh, some things that could be you know, worth less are you know, some things that um, have no value as far as you can't, it's priceless. You're not going to sell it. I'm not going to get rid of that. Uh, so that's a memory. Uh, one of the uh, earlier ones that I picked up, uh, 3001 uh, from CH. Uh, this one uh, is one of my favorite titanium uh, ones from CH. I was extremely CH. I'm extremely disappointed that you did not keep it this size when you went to G10. Really. I mean, they, I bought it, the G10 version because I was like, okay, well, I like this one and I'll get a G10 one. But the G10 one was like a third bigger than this, and I was extremely, extremely disappointed. So CH didn't bring out a G10 version of this size. Exactly, just make that G10. Uh, and then I do have the um, 3510, also from CH. And then these ones I actually got uh, done by uh, Mike Emler. He did the, the edge on this as well. And then last pouch, uh, so uh, any overviews, uh, so for people that uh, missed out on the earlier part of the video, we talked about some of the um, 
Razor Edge system products that I got in to test out. Um, I bought them, not provided or anything like that. Uh, and then uh, did have the gimbal I talked about. And then uh, also um, we're do uh, the ones that are going out for the uh, steel test uh, are going to be uh, this one, this one, and the Fura. So those are going to go out for edge testing or steel testing uh, for these knives. So those are the ones going out. Uh, so there's one um, with the scale, also in the little uh, two-year pouch. Uh, this one uh, provided. Now uh, this one uh, was one from uh, from Mr. Blower. Uh, he actually, I, surprisingly, like it's just crazy for some of this, but uh, he gave me this knife. It was just. Um, I was able to meet him in Portland when he came over uh, for a family event, um, and he gave me this knife. So very, very gracious, very uh, just things that you don't expect or can't even understand sometimes. Uh, also, I have the little two-year. So the only two-year in a two-year case uh, is this one, the Saturday Night Special SNS. That's that one right there. So cool, cool. Uh, anything else um, that anybody has any questions for? Now we have four people, no, three people on good I think one is me. Uh, but anybody have any questions, concerns, anything that you guys want to talk about? Uh, so now we do have the box that came in uh, for the blind knife review. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to open it uh, since Steve um, taped up every single corner on this box. So uh, to get into this blind i don't know how i'm going to do that maybe i just have to push through the box or something but that will be coming up for the blind knife review but if there's nothing else so four five or four people on uh, so anybody have any questions anybody have anything uh, we have also if you didn't see it earlier so i'm going to be pointing out this thing this is the mini mousetrap and again, if this is mini, uh, the full-size mouse trap uh, would be humongous. Uh, but I'm going to see how that works, if it corrects any of the edges uh, for some of the knives for this steel. And then the little edge guide uh, for that one. So, uh, last call, last call. Anybody? Anybody have any questions, questions, concerns, channel input, uh, anything like that that you'd like to add? If you'd just like to now have a comment listed down there, now you can list a comment as well. To see how that goes. Again, there's not really a lot of instructions for um, these type of things. So that's one reason why I wanted to pick it up and then test it out. Uh, but supposedly you'd run this on the edge and be able to feel uh, how the blade is. So that's where I'm not sure. So like this one, I don't know if you run it. Let's look at the instructions real quick. So it seems like you run it on the tip of this, so right on this corner. And that's why um, uh, they said that you could just use a big pen to do the same type of thing. You can definitely feel the imperfections on the blade. So I think that's the point of this. It's just like, meh. How's it going, BH? Uh, we're just about to end out. If you have any questions or anything else, no, we just had talked about the blind knife review. We had talked about some of the razor edge systems items, went through the knives, uh, and then uh, also talked about the gimbal. Um, but you can definitely see and feel um, if the edge is damaged. So, yeah, we'll see how that is. $9. But thank you very much. Uh, for the folks that stayed on, anybody have any other questions, let me know, and I will go and sign out somehow. Here. Maybe use the notch. So this way. Yeah, because you can definitely feel it's supposed to be patent, patented, um, which is like, eh, it's this piece of plastic, but 
because this edge is really bad. Uh, so that's about it for that. And signing off, I'll see if I'll delete this or not. But otherwise, you can watch it through. And thank you very much for your time.